Hi guys and welcome to another, 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 another. Hi guys and welcome to the next of the Lada Operation Lada videos. The Lada is back on the road. So we've got it registered and it's back on the road. There was a lot in the works to get it back on the road. I have a full list of things to go through, show you all the little improvements we've done, waving of the hands, and without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So first up, the brakes. It wasn't the actual vacuum booster, it was the, the pressure regulator. We had to like redo all the hose lines and everything in the back. It was it was an absolute cluster. Pretty much the way it worked, the front brakes worked all the way up and then there was like a pretty much a stoppage in the line and there was no pressure coming out to the back brakes. So now the back brakes have all been redone. We pretty much refurbished the entire brake, like everything, the drums and everything. It, was, they, they're, it works amazing. In the past, I'd put my foot down on the pedal, get about halfway. Uh, and it wouldn't do anything until like the last little bit of the pedal. Now from about halfway onwards, I actually have brakes. So it works. When I had to get it registered again, they do it on a brake test and pass the brake test. So obviously they're working. We found a little exhaust leak. It was making a bit of a hum. So we made sure we fixed up that gap where the, uh, the exhaust uh, leak was coming out. And now that is all well and done and truly fixed. So when we were driving this car, the, the ride was horrible. Every time we went over a bump, it was like you were getting punched in your spine. So the back shocks have been fixed and replaced. They're pretty much the ones that came out of, uh, I think it was like a Range Rover or something like that. They were the exact same copy, copy pasta. So we chucked those ones in there. Now from the inside of the car, there was uh, all the electric panels in the, in the middle. They were all just like, kind of like laying around everywhere and we didn't want it to go into the, the you know, the, the registration place and they'd go to flick all the switches and that and turn the lights on and they were just all like flip, flopping around everywhere. So we actually uh, built a little bracket, little, 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 still little bracket put that in there, now they're all nice and neat and tidy. Now, I did touch on this about how there was the change of the Liberty, Super Liberty seats being put into this car. So the, the major change that needed to happen to make it uh, legal, um, because it's when, you, when you change seats, it needs to be able to meet the stand, like the st satisfactory standards of safety. So um, the original seatbelt actual clasp, when you put the seatbelt across and in, that was actually attached to the seat and not the actual frame of the car. So we had to actually attach it to the frame of the car. So we put it into the original larder uh, spots. We uh, had little stalks come up from there and then now we plug the seat bolt straight into there. The engineer came by, checked all the seats, made sure the bolts were all the right bolts and all that kind of stuff. And now that he's uh, signed all that, we've got a certificate and we're allowed to have the Subaru Liberty seats in. Now the windscreen wipers, they, they're still extremely slow when they go uh, across, but they work. So that may, means the standards, but there wasn't pumping out any water. So we had to uh, actually put the original uh, windscreen washer bottle in there and now it has water again. Now, something I didn't know about headlights when it came to the Lada Neva. So the guy that um, I bought this off, he put in some aftermarket uh, headlights and he bought them straight off eBay. They all looked exactly the same as these ones pretty much, but uh, the Australian standards also meets the European standards for headlights. There's actually a little symbol up the top or on the, on the headlight that actually says that it meets the European standards. And um, so the ones that I bought, I think it was from uh, the same aftermarket ones that you put in a Jeep and uh, they weren't cheap, but these actually have really nice headlines. Now this has got an aftermarket carburetor on top of the motor. So the, uh, there was like all these little extra little hoses and stuff that were missing. Um, I'm not sure if we were meant to do this, but we pretty much just blocked them all up. So at least they were filled in. And then that way, you know, when you look at it, it looks like it's ridgy ditch, but I'm not really sure if, uh, if they cared or not, but now there's nothing that has nothing on it. Uh, if we could find where like an air, field, air hose goes to somewhere else, we, we, we did plug it in and all that. But because it was an aftermarket one, we just pretty much just blocked them all up. Now with the indicators as well, um, these ones are nice and shiny and clean. These ones have a natural slight tint. It was the only thing they picked up on it. Um, so I have to find some after, oh, some original uh, indicators for the front, but the back ones are all nice and good. Um, but yeah, these ones currently, there's a little tint on it and they're not actually got that European standard written on it. So that's the thing they flagged me for, but he said it was the only thing that was wrong with the car. And he said that if I, as long as I make sure I fix them up later, then they're, they're happy with them. Now, when you um, start this car up, it kicks into like overdrive when it's starting to rev. Um, it, it really high, has a really high idle because uh, it's got an automatic choke put, put into it because of that aftermarket carburetor. And so now um, when you start the car, it idles really high, touch the pedal and it goes back down to a normal idle. Um, beforehand, the idle was still really high and it wasn't actually sitting at a very good idle spot. Like you could actually pull the accelerator pedal back towards you a little bit and um, it was just like dropping the revs that way. So we, we tinkered around with the, uh, the idle the idle arm and now it idles nice and nice and purring it purrs so there's still 
a couple of things we got left to do with this car. I actually went back and watched all the original videos over to see what I'd said in the past. I said, shit, I need to get that done. Now, there's the overall makeover bit that's gonna make it all rush and slabbed out. That's all still gonna happen. That'll be in the last video. The next video is going to be the sound system. Uh, we're gonna be working on that this weekend. And uh, on top of that, we also have the face shield. Now, we've already got that getting fabricated at the, uh, the metal fabs because they're gonna make it out of aluminum. It's gonna look so sick. Um, but we've already got the bolt, the brackets. We've been testing out these brackets ideas up here to make sure it, it all mounts up nice and neat. And so then we can take it off so we can drive it on the road. So if I want to go to a convention, I'm going to be a dream hack later on this year. Uh, I can I can drive it up to a dream hack or I can put it on a trailer and drive it around the, the convention center and stuff. And it's all street legal. But um, when we want to put the face shield on, we can. Uh, the old, whole idea of the face shield is we can drive around with it. So I'm at a convention. It's going to be sick. I've got so many cool ideas for this. There's actually probably about four videos left of this series and I'm really excited to share them with you. Some of them will be longer, some will be shorter. I know this one's a bit of a shorter one, but um, yeah. Now, if you are enjoying this kind of content, I'm putting out the IRL videos every single week. You can find out all the behind the scenes stuff. We put so much extra footage up. Some videos are like 30 seconds long, some are about 10 minutes long, um, up on the Patreon. So you go patreon.com forward slash pestily. And if you don't want to uh, just check out the behind the scenes, but you want to support us making more crazy, stupid stuff like this, all the money is going to go 100% back into the uh, into the products that we make. So uh, obviously we've got this one, we've got Ultimate Gaming Chair, and there's a lot of fun stuff I want to do. I want to make a, I want to do a fire truck. I, I've got all these other crazy ideas, and I'm going to be doing some uh, chats with the patrons as well to explain to you guys what I want to do and where I want to take this channel. So a lot of gaming content still going out, but then there's still this IRL stuff. This is this is for my mental health probably more than anything, but I'm actually really enjoying it. I'm getting outside beautiful weather this is actually winter right now in australia and it's actually quite nice and yeah we're enjoying it so stay tuned the next couple of videos for the latter are going to be pretty intense and uh hopefully you guys enjoy them so lastly guys i'll see you next time you did a very good job paul thank you